Iowa Hawkeyes didn't win the championship this year, but the 1960-61 version of the Hustlin' Hawks became the most talked about basketball team in the nation. At the midterm break, Coach Charm Sherman's determined Hawkeyes had won 12 of 15 and were hot on the heels of the Buckeyes of Ohio State for the conference title. Then the apparent death knell sounded. After semester examinations, four regulars were ineligible and only one, brilliant Don Nelson, remained available to Charm. The remainder of the team had to be fashioned from a squad which totaled only nine men. One was recruited from the student body, and the now famous Hustlin' Hawks took it from there and tackled the tough conference schedule. So now let's journey along with Coach Sherman and the Hustlin' Hawks of 1960-61, who created a storybook finish from apparent mid-season disaster. Well, preseason estimates placed the Iowa Hawkeyes near the middle of the Big Ten Conference and a narrow 77-75 squeak in the opener against a good South Dakota State team didn't hint of the many good things to come. Charm's first semester team had Nelson and Harris at forwards, Allen at center, Maher and Zager along with Matt Sacconi at the guard positions. This South Dakota State team later won their conference and ended up third in the nation in the small college tournament. Here is action from that game. The Hawkeyes are in white, as they always are in their home games. This is South Dakota State in black on the attack. The ball game was tough all the way through, and a brilliant defensive situation for the Hawkeyes were able to hold that lead in the final seconds of the game. Identifying the Hawkeyes, this is Zager to Denny Rungi, and a long push shot by the senior from Calumet. But the Hawkeyes in the lead early in the ball game. Iowa continues to battle. This is Allen starting his fast break. And leading it and finishing it is Mike Woods who lays it in. And the white-shirted Hawks are far out in front at this stage of the ball game, but the South Dakota team caught up and made a thrilling finish. At the free throw line, the South Dakota State team. Here is Ron Zager again on the front court. This is Iowa's first semester team. Frank Allen to Woods in the corner to Rungi. All in just a moment, All-American Don Nelson, the one that we feel is an All-American, will have it. The Hawks won this one 77-75. Coach Sherman and his Hawkeyes ran into a potent man-for-man -man defense when they faced the St. Louis Billikens at home on December 10th, a team that finished second in the National Invitational Tournament, incidentally. Sherm felt this game clearly showed his boys the value a good defense can play in basketball. When your team has an off night in shooting, a tight, aggressive defense can pull you through. They learned their lesson well, as later developments and statistics proved, that Iowa's Hawkeyes were the best defensive team in the Big Ten. Big Bevo Nordman led this St. Louis Billiken team to the win over the Hawkeyes. So let's watch some action from the St. Louis Hawkeye game. Iowa is in white, and the black-shirted Billikens, very clawing, and very determined on defense. And the Hawk picked up a lot of good points in watching the Billikens on defense in this game. It later proved invaluable in their second place finish in the Big Ten. This is Big Bevo Nordman, one of the biggest college, uh, players in college at circles today. Later injured and did not finish out the season. This is Frank Allen rebounding for the Hawkeyes. And an interception by Mankowski as the Billikens continue to fight back. Rough, tough play here as the Missouri Valley Conference team from St. Louis battles Iowa Hawkeyes. Ron Zager to Dave Maher, who slips it in on the side. This is the St. Louis Billiken team on offense again. Watch the very fine footwork of the Hawkeyes on defense. Denny Rungi. This is Ron Zager on defense, and now Don Nelson holding the Hawkeyes in this ball game with St. Louis. A December 10th game at Iowa City with St. Louis winning a thrilling ball game, 61 to 55. Cautious play with the sharp breaking Billikens kept the Hawkeyes' footwork in constant threat all during the game. This is Bevo Nordman again, showing his tremendous drive under the basket as Rungi and Nelson start a fast break, ending up in the hands of uh, Dave Maher in the corner to Nelson, who hits from the side. Iowa 55 and St. Louis 61. The Arizona Wildcats were the victims of an Iowa record when the hot shooting Hawkeyes hit a total of 105 points to erase the old high mark of 103 set many years ago. 
contributing to the actual tying and breaking of that new high total were reserves Joe Reddington, Joe Novak, Dick Shaw, Tom Purcell, and Mark Shantz. This was the last game before Christmas and the final appearance in Iowa City before the old Golden Black upset all odds and won the Los Angeles Classic out on the coast. Before we forget this, the unheralded Hawks beat California in four overtimes, 83-80, an Iowa record incidentally, then they beat Southern Cal and UCLA. This tournament gave the Hawkeyes national ranking, and the players you're watching now were destined to play a very important role later in the season. We'll identify some of these. This is sophomore Dick Shaw defending the baseline. Gary Lorenz starts a fast break down the court, continues his drive right on through. That was Gary Lorenz of Clinton, Iowa, at the free throw line on that drive. Denny Runge, number 52. Tom Purcell near the cameras, number 30. Mark Chance is over on the far side. And the fifth player, just out of view and coming up now, is Joe Reddington, number 44 of Orient, Iowa. Iowa battling Arizona and setting a new offensive record for the Iowa Hawkeyes. Iowa in white. This is left-handed Joe Reddington moving down across the timeline, attempting to get it up in front of the offensive side of the court. Mark Chance comes back to give him a lift. Now these are reserves, as you can see, had a long way to go and later proved invaluable to the Hawkeye cause. Well, the first conference test for Iowa's once beaten scrappers was Minnesota on January 7th here in Iowa City. The Hawks battled, rebounded, and hounded the bewildered Gophers and held them to a total of 16 points at the half. This was quite a feat in these times of high-scoring basketball, and in the meantime, Iowa's amazing point-getters had run up 40 points at halftime, 40 to 16. Brilliant Don Nelson on a drive-in layup against the Gophers. The Gophers with the ball right now, attired in a very uh, pale gold. The Hawkeyes are in white playing at home, identifying some of the Gophers, Grigas, Magdance, Erickson, McGran, a tall, talented Gopher team that later went on to end up fairly well in the conference, but the Hawkeyes were able to pin it on them twice during the 1960-61 season. Iowa did a tremendous job on defense against the Gophers, as we mentioned, holding them to 16 points at the half, running up 40, and completing a 71-46 victory at Iowa City against the Golden Gophers. A year ago, Minnesota had run up a fantastic 72 shooting percentage, and the Hawks were out for revenge. That was Nelson rebounding, handing to Dave Maher on the near side. Maher into Zager, the two watch charm guards of the first semester team of Iowa Hawkeyes. Tommy Harris from Batavia, Illinois on the side. This is Maher once again dribbling up, trying to get the ball over to Nelson on the high post. Don Nelson trying to break through, lobs it on the near side to Tommy Harris. A foul called and Harris at the free throw line, adding a point to the Iowa total. The Gophers were bewildered by this very tight man-for-man -man defense the Hawkeyes threw up. And all afternoon here in Iowa City on a televised game, the Hawkeyes kept the pressure on and defeated the Gophers 71-46 to here in Iowa City. This is Don Nelson with the ball number 15 made the all Big Ten team and Iowa's most valuable player for the year and one of the real fine basketball teams in the nation. Don Zager, a senior from Depew, Illinois, trying to lob in. As we near the end of the game, Iowa 71, Minnesota 46. The talent-laden Illini from Champaign-Urbana were met on January 16th at Iowa City. Now this was a potent team with Downey, Colangelo, Small, Burwell, Wessels, and others. The old Golden Black whittled them down to size and ran their conference record to four wins without a defeat and their season's record to 12-1, and one, a loss to St. Louis, their only setback at this time. They finished off the Illini in this ball game, 78-71 to 71, here in Iowa City. Again, the Hawks hit about 43% of their shots and the brilliant Don Nelson contributed 25. This was the only game between the schools this season. And the old Golden Black, after polishing off the Illini, were four and nothing in the conference. Colangelo hitting a left-handed push shot for the Illini. The Hawks on the attack now in white. This is Don Nelson. Wessels against him. 
This is Allen getting a handoff and a jump shot up under the basket. Good for Allen and the Hawkeyes cutting the Illini up on defense. And now the Hawkeyes, this is Bill Burwell. Defensive play supreme by the Hawkeyes. Dave Maher up in the front court. This is Tom Harris once again, six feet five inches to Maher to Zager. Zager jump shoots from way out on the court. It's a little bit short and the Illini take over. The scrappy Hawkeyes still battling at the free throw line, the Illini. The Hawkeyes on the attack once again. Around the horn it goes, Zager to Tommy Harris. A long jump shot is good. And the Illini on the attack once again. Big Burwell playing the high post has an interception by Frank Allen. And Allen slows it down to teammate Tom Harris, to Zager. Zager tries to go, gets a screen from Nelson. The Hawks won at 78-71. After the semester break, the Hawks journeyed to Bloomington, where the Hustlin' Hawks were born. With four regulars missing and only Don Nelson the remaining starter, the spirited combination of Nelson, Sacconi, Rungi, Reddington, Novak, and Shaw upset the hurrying Hoosiers 74-67 and astounded the sports world. Coach Sherman called this his greatest thrill in a long line of playing and coaching highlights. He'll never forget it. This group of scrappers played defense as if they had invented it. And with this great victory at Bloomington, captured the hearts of Hawkeye fans and sports fans all over America. Let's watch a portion of the first game the Hustlin' Hawks played as a unit. I was in black, battling against a driving bass. The Hawks Matt Sacconi in possession of the ball. Brilliant and fast. He drives and works out at the free throw line on the foul. The Hawks have a two-point lead late in the ball game and run it out. Matt hits two from the charity line here. This game at Bloomington, and the tall, talented Hoosiers fight back on the attack. This is Reddington on defense. Joel Novak moves up. Reddington switches on the driver, and a foul called against the uh, Hustlin' Hawks late in the game at Bloomington. This is uh, rebounding attempts by the uh, Hoosiers that are thwarted by the Hawkeyes, Novak and Sacconi. Sacconi's speed bringing him up into the front court on the side. Controlling the ball. They have a lead and they want to keep it. There is a foul call. Matt Sacconi once again at the free throw line. And the Hawks have this one sewed up at Bloomington, Illinois. But the Hoosiers are fighting back, trying to get back in the closing seconds. And they really scrap under the basket. And uh, Joe Novak shooting down at the far end of the field on the defensive uh, foul against the Hoosiers. Here they come once again, driving down the court. The Hawkeyes scrambling around them. Sacconi attempting to block the shot. They go high for the rebound. And these are the closing seconds of the game at Bloomington, Indiana. And there you have it, a brilliant 74-67 win by the Hustlin' Hawks at Bloomington, Indiana. The Ohio State Buckeyes undefeated for the season NCAA champions and the unanimous choice of the number one team in the nation came to Iowa City January 18th to battle the Hustlin' Hawks. A battery of TV cameras and radio microphones along with a wide press coverage were ready to capture the excitement. It was rated no contest for the Hawks against the mighty Buckeyes, but the fans who served it and saw it remember this one a good long time. The battle and Hawks had it all the way and led from the start. The sellout crowd couldn't believe what they were seeing, and the tremendous effort put forth by the old Golden Black was a thrilling experience for all of us. Rated at least a 15 to 20 point underdog, Iowa played as if they were favored to blow the Buckeyes off the court. Only a desperation finish won for the Buckeyes. Let's watch it. This is Jerry Lucas, will identify the players for you. The Hawkeyes are in white. This is Novak from the near side to Sacconi. Sacconi to Novak, out in front. Guarded closely by Larry Siegfried, a senior on the Buckeye team. Novak with the ball. In the corner to Don Nelson, checked by Lucas. Nelson tries to go back, hands it over to Sacconi. A left-handed pass out to Novak. A long push shot is no good. And they battle for the rebound and Richie Hoyt to John Havlicek, who moves it up into the front court on the far side. We'll describe the thrilling finish of this. This is an All-American play, and All-American Lucas is there to put it in. The Hawks' rungy hands to Novak. Novak's dribbling in the corner to Nelson. Nelson to Rungi. Fakes a pass to Rungi, finally hits him. 
Runge turns, jump shoots it up, no good. And Lucas comes down for the Buckeyes. We're nearing the end of this thrilling ball game. Siegfried across the timeline as Novak checks him. Here's uh, Slippery Mel Noel. Richie Hoyt passing to Siegfried is hit out of bounds by the Hawkeyes. And Noel shoots it in out on the court to Lucas. And a foul is called, and the Buckeyes make it. Here is Sacconi jumping, missing, rebounded by Nelson. Nelson gets a shot from the side. It's good, and the foul is called, and Nelson contributes a three-point play. This is Nelson. The Hawks are one be or two be three behind, rather, and Nelson closes it up to one behind. The Buckeyes are now protecting a one-point lead with about 25 seconds to play. Here is uh, Lucas. Lucas out on the court on the far side to Hoyt. Now to uh, Knight in the ball game. Lucas to Siegfried, who misses it. The Hawks have possession with 18 seconds to play and watch Reddington call timeout. He does. And now when play resumed, the Hawks have 18 seconds. They are one point behind. Here is Sacconi up on the far side. They're trying to work open for that one last shot. Sacconi has it to Novak. Back to Sacconi. He's checked very closely. Back to Novak, who gets it into Nelson. Nelson dribbles, jumps, shoots, misses, rebound by Shaw. No good. And the ball game is over, and the Buckeyes win it. 62 to 61. Well, the Iowa-Minnesota rematch at Minneapolis was strictly an Iowa night. Previously, the Hawks had held the Gophers to 46 points in Iowa City and were out to make it two straight over our arch rivals from the north. Again, a splendid exhibition of determined man-for-man -man defense was the answer. This Iowa version of the undermanned Hawks took the initiative and were never headed. After a close start, the Hustlers broke the game wide open in the second quarter, and there was nothing the Gophers could do about it. The game ended Iowa 61, Minnesota 43, and that's real defense in this period of high-scoring offenses. Iowa's in black on the road as Novak crosses the timeline against the Gophers. On the far side is Reddington to Nelson. Nelson spins, jumps a long one out. It's no good. They fight for the rebound, and the Gophers have it. The Gophers fast break. They were cold this night, and the Hawkeyes were able to contain them with a tough, rough, rugged, man-for-man -man defense. They slow it down, Reddington and Novak conferring. Early in the game, the Gophers were close, but the Hawks moved it up to nine at the half and finished an 18-point winner over the Gophers. This is a beautiful drive by Sacconi along the baseline. The Hawks are in black, guarding against the taller, stronger Gophers of Minnesota. McGran, along with Erickson and Grigas, Magnus, composing a very young Minnesota team that will be back next year. Losers to Iowa, 61 to 43. Well, this game in Iowa City with the Purdue Boilermakers was for second place in the conference, and the Hawkeyes out hustled and outsped the Boilermakers throughout this ball game. This was one of the roughest games played in Iowa City this year. Featuring All-American and Olympic star Terry Dishinger, Purdue had given Iowa a six-point defeat in Lafayette earlier in the year, and the Hawks were out to even things up, and they did it. Purdue has McQuitty. All-American Dishinger. The Hawks are in white. Here comes Matt Sacconi down the far side of the floor. Jumping, shooting. No good, and they scrap for the rebound. A lot of rough, rugged action in this Purdue game. Sacconi to Nelson, a beautiful roll shot from under the basket against Dishinger, showing the versatility of this boy. Here is Dishinger with tremendous speed trying to get his shot away. He ended up outscoring Nelson, but everyone felt that Nelson played him at least even, if not more than held his own. This is Dick Shaw trying to score from under the basket on a hook shot, but he contributes from the charity line. Purdue was fast, Purdue was rugged, and actually ended up the season in a tie for Iowa for second place. Beautiful defensive play by Dick Shaw to Tom Purcell from Clarion, Iowa. Down the court to Joe Reddington. Reddington Purcell. This is Reddington now moving out in front. Watch the nice team control of the Hawkeyes. This is Nelson again. And another brilliant move by Don is just a little bit short. But the Boilermakers fast breaking now against Iowa's Hawkeyes. Purdue didn't have it this night. The Hawks out battled them, out hustled them. And the brilliant Matt Sacconi pushes one far down the court to Tommy Purcell. This is Don Nelson battling against the Purdue Boilermakers. Watch this brilliant shot by Nelson. 
Iowa won it over Purdue here in Iowa City by an 11 point margin of 73 62 after holding a 10 point lead at halftime. We'll get another chance to see the speed of Terry Dishinger of Purdue. Well, the final at McGaw Fieldhouse in Evanston against the Wildcats at Northwestern was another page in the books of thrills and achievement by Sean's Hustlin' Hawks. Don Nelson is pulling the Hawkeyes up to within one point late in the ball game as they're trailing Northwestern. The Iowa Hawkeyes have it in their possession, passing the ball around the horn, trying for one shot. The ball goes in to Don, to rather to Joe Reddington, who makes a brilliant jump shot from 17 feet away, and the Hawks have a 63-62 lead. In the final seconds of the play at McGaw Fieldhouse, the Hawks are battling desperately to hold on to that one-point lead. The Hawkeyes are in black, the Wildcats are in white. Desperation finish here at Northwestern. This is Matt Sacconi on the far side to Don Nelson. The ball game is over, and the Hawkeyes won it, tied for second in the conference, and the youthful, brilliant coach of the Iowa Hawkeyes, Sharm Sherman, gets a much-deserved ride into the dressing room. A tremendous finish to a brilliant season in 1960 and 61. And say, wasn't this a great season? Our only loss for the next season will be senior Denny Runge, who played a big role in the great season. Brilliant, outstanding Don Nelson, all Big Ten and most valuable for the Hawkeyes. He'll be back, and he'll be an All-American. This hard-working, dedicated coaching staff, led by 26-year-old strategist Sharon Sherman, assistant Bob King, freshman coach Dick Schultz, and Les Cuny, and the foursome. This quartet has great hopes for the future. Iowa basketball is in wonderful hands. Well, this team made a lot of records, but the records are not what made this season. Successful the first half of the season, the entire state and most of the nation followed these Hawks with an interest that was almost unbelievable. The word pride best describes the quality these young athletes possessed. Pride in themselves, pride in their school, and pride in their state. This was one of the most successful teams in Iowa history, but the way they did it with hustle, pride, and a hounding defense won for Coach Charm Sherman, his staff, and his hustling Hawks immortality in the annals of Iowa basketball. On the basis of his team showing in their national ranking, Charm Sherman was honored as Coach of the West team in the annual East-West Charity Game and was third in the voting as Coach of the Year. Iowa may have a better team in the future. We hope they do. But we wonder if they will ever have one to surpass the respect and admiration earned by the Hustlin' Hawks of 1960-61.